Thank you. Yeah, I was asked uh, a great uh, question on <clears throat> on a commercial company uh, uh, requesting staff to donate uh, <laughs> donate time to uh, the company, what the company views as as a good as a good cause, and uh, assume the staff will just plug along unless they. Um, Unless they opt out uh, and and potentially sometimes use their own time to do that, um, it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great question on uh, the thing the thing of doing that. And yeah, I would agree that um, one of the things you know I think you know that was quite interesting. I think with Hawkins talking about all this thing of um, uh, I might be fra I might be repeating him incorrectly. Probably am, but anyway, things like that they come out of a, uh, a victim consciousness. Uh, thing you know, th potential things like uh, sex discrimination, racial discrimination, disability discrimination, and uh, can come with the for, for you know with uh, culture becoming more secular, more atheistic. You know, all kinds of relativistic um, attitudes are being adopted, both in the political and uh, and also in the commercial fields of what seems to be correct, so to speak. And and um, I definitely had that as well because um, uh, you know people become very very sensitive to uh, you know their rights not being there. And even I, you know, as an addict, I definitely had that one. Because with the, I remember after I got uh, kidney failure, and uh, the company put me on under um, uh, what was they what they call that when they try and fire you. Uh, uh, anyway, they put me on the grit. Yeah, there was a grievance. No, not the grievance. You know, when the first stage, yeah, I had a grievance, and they give you like a period of time to try and correct your behaviour. Uh, and um, and I, I I said you know. Um, You've got to treat me differently because I'm not, I'm disabled now. You know, so I I got a, got a solicitor <laughs> involved, and uh, and uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so I I had that I had that theme, and but I'm just sort of saying, you know, all these kind of things do come in, you know, where the company will think it may be they may think it's good or they may think it's good for their image. Or they may think that that they are uh, uh, it makes them feel good for some kind of ego-based reason, you know, or or, mm -hmm. uh, or they uh, sometimes there might be ego motives like oh we get all our staff in our company to do like a day of free work every month, so that means we're a better company than your company, mm -hmm. you know, or we're more you know in their brochures for recruiting people yeah. you can say like. Oh, we're we're probably one of the most ethical companies around. Mm. Like we, all our people are really lovely mm. and donate their time, and we yeah. we have beautiful policies of love and harmony where we have group group hugs um, <laughs> on a Friday <laughs> and do yoga and help all the poor starving children in the poor areas in London, and we spend a lot of time. So we are the most green, because I mean, love this green thing, you know, we put all our cups and to recycle, yeah. recycle them all, yeah. our staff uh, yeah. go out and help all the disabled children and teach them how to make, do knitting, or whatever it is. So, so there might be more ego motives and it's like, and everyone needs to toe the party line, mm -hmm. you know, and so there, there can be like, well, this is our culture, and and you do it. So, or otherwise, you're in the bad book. You know, you're in the bad book. So, I think if I was in such a thing, well, remember, you know, for me, it's like what what keeps you safe in these environments is your level of consciousness. Uh, so, and if you're in a company which uh, has a lower level of consciousness, if, for example, it doesn't matter if you get fired because your level of consciousness will gravitate you to another company. Which is so probably if I had a company now, where they said like you've got to spend like spend your weekends helping uh, if they thought like I should um, I don't know like teach people English 
in the local local poor secondary school or something and just spend your weekend because that's what the company thinks is the right thing to do. I'd probably say no. Because um, I remember, um, like Hawkins talked about uh, Haiti. Uh, Haiti. And uh, Haiti uh, calibrates very low, much below 200, the level of consciousness. Country. The country. The country, yeah. So no matter how much money and resources you put into a place where the consciousness level is low, it will have no effect. It has no effect on the people. Because if you're like, if you've not done the self-development work so your consciousness raises and you just chuck a lot of money at the people or at a person, uh, they will still lose all the money. They won't change, you see. It's only by taking personal responsibility and developing your consciousness. So, um, and we see that in the 12 step groups. You know, like, only the people who want to change will change. If you try and make someone change who doesn't want to change, it will mm. not work. Mm. So, like, if I see, if I saw an alcoholic on the street, and I said, like, oh, poor alcoholic, let me give you books on how to stop drinking alcoholism, let me take you home and look after you, and here's, like, thousands of pounds, to get a nice, get a, get a bar, get, get a nice room and a place to stay. Uh, and you just shove a lot of money and support to them. Uh, after a month, they'll still be an alcoholic. And all the money will be gone. Mm. And it will be a total waste of time. Yeah. You know, it's a total waste of time. So if you see people who are suffering and you chuck a lot of money, resources and love at them, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing will happen. They'll just spend all the money in the usual ways they'll lose everything, and at the end of the day, they'll still be the same. So it's pointless. Like in the 12-step groups, we know like, uh, if you get someone who comes in and they don't really want to change, there's no point in trying to help them. You know, I mean, you, can't, you could say there is a point, but that's kind of like a judgment call. But if they really don't want to be helped, uh, it, it, you, know, you can phone them up every day, you can give them a place to stay, and they'll still be drinking. You can give them lots of money and they just spend it on booze. So there's, there's no point in doing that. There is a point in people asking for help and being willing to change mm. and then helping them. That's mm. different. Mm. Like if the company said, like, this person is desperate to change, they want, they specifically ask for help and we really believe they want the help and you've got the skills to help them. That's different. Mm. That's different. Then I'd say, okay, I might, I might consider doing that. But if they said, like, oh, in our view, these are uh, people who are not well off, and we're going to go and save them, and spend lots of money and time, and be nice to them, and give them everything they need, for me, that would be a waste of time. These people don't want to change. We're just going in there trying to be nice to them. Like when I was a food addict, if someone like tried to tell me gave me a book on how to stop donut eating. If they just gave me a wad of money, I'd just say, thank you very much, and I'd just buy some more donuts. You know, because I don't want to change. You being nice to me thinking I'm, I'm, I need to change is not what I want to do. What I want to do is to carry on eating donuts. So you can get, but I would say yes if you want to give me money and be nice to me, but at the end of that, all that money and time, I wouldn't be different, you know. When I'd hit a lot of pain and I wanted to change, that was different, different scenario. So I don't see this thing of see, because you're projecting that these people need your help. You're projecting that they want your help and you're projecting you can help them. But you, you know, just um, seeing someone in the street and then giving them everything, uh, in my view, won't help them. Uh, it, it will if, if they wanted to help, if they sought your help, it's different. But if you just give someone who doesn't want to change a lot of money and time and resources, it's not going to do that. And a lot of these things are, a lot of these environments, if they're at a, a low level of consciousness, you know, there's a lot of factors that underpin those environments staying at a low level of consciousness. So you just funneling a lot of money doesn't necessarily change a lot of things or a lot of time. You know, because there's um, one of the, the biggest factors is if a person wants to change. When a person hits pain and a rock bottom and desires 
has a spiritual intent to want to change and then you offer them help that is very very effective in u using resources but you know just sort of saying like these group of people uh, this group of people we're just going to give them lots and lots of money because we think they need help uh, in my view is a very bad use of resources uh, and so um, so I wouldn't. The other thing with, with that is um, I think it would be good to also one of the things um, with change is um, I mean one of the, the prime factors with change, education is usually one of the better factors and I think this is a thing of um, uh, if you um, if you give people education, that's that's better than giving them just money. Uh, like if if I see someone, uh, if I saw someone, if it's just giving them money, they're probably going to be the same as after you gave them the money. So that's the, I think that's like the biblical parable of you can give people fish or you can teach people to fish. And if it's something like, if I'm being asked to do something by my company, which I think is just giving fish, then they're not going to, they're not going to be any different after I've given them the fish. So if you've got a poor person, and I just give them a thousand pounds, their mentality is, is, they have poor mentality around money, and they have a poor level of consciousness, they want to spend everything on addictions or feeling good. So you give them a thousand pounds, nothing's going to change, they're just going to spend that thousand pounds, they're still going to have that bad consciousness at the end of it. Whereas, um, if I give them education, but even if they, if they don't want to change, there's no point even giving them education even. But if they want to change and give them education, I think uh, that's, that's, that, that's good. Um, so, um, I think, uh, yeah, um, Hawkins gave the example, checked it out, can you you? Like, you have millions of pounds sent to a country, which calibrates at a very low level, and afterwards there's no change in the country, it still calibrates. Mm -hmm. And exactly, this, the whole culture has got like uh, their belief systems around everything it's at such a low chronic. But we're just, just chucking tons of money in aid at it doesn't do anything. There's that you know you can just millions of pounds in there. So, so again, I wouldn't want to just suddenly you know it's like someone's judgment that someone needs help and that I should be sent to help them. I wouldn't want to do that. Whereas I like being in twelve-step groups um, uh, where people come up to you and say, I'm in a lot of pain because my life has become horrible, I spend too much money or eat too many donuts, and I want you to help me, and I'll do anything if you help me. Like, I like helping those people, but I wouldn't like if I saw someone obesely eating on a park bench with lots of donuts and chocolates and everything, I wouldn't want to go up to them and say, I'm going to help you. You know, I'm going, to, I'm going to like take you to my home and teach you and cook for you and give you a good life and try and rescue you from donut eating. Because, you know, they didn't ask for it. I'm projecting that they want my help. I'm trying to give them my help forcefully. Um, you know, so I think, you know, for me, that's like irrelevant use of my time, really. Uh, so these good projects, I think they might be useful, but I wouldn't use it myself because I think it's a very wasteful use of my time. You know, I think, um, and I personally like the, uh, if I'm going to do service, I like helping people who ask me for help, not trying to force my help on someone who didn't ask me, because I think that's it, like, that's like, if I see someone who I think is not spiritual, and I go up to them, I think, you've got a problem, let me help you. I wouldn't want to do that, mm. you know. Uh, or if I, if I was to judge, if I was the managing director of a company, and I thought, um, these, these people have got, you know, these people are suffering, I'm going to go out there and help them. I wouldn't subscribe to that, you know, because they haven't asked for my help. Uh, but I know as an addict, I'll, I'll take anything that's free, but it doesn't mean I'll change afterwards. So if you want to give me free money and give me lifts and give me free education, I probably will take it, but I won't change. You know, I'll still be the same person I was afterwards, nothing would have shifted. Um, I quite like doing mystical stuff, like uh, if I see something is wrong in the world, like cancelling my beliefs, or God did not create it so it's not real, or, or uh, just praying for forgiveness for the one in me who's been like that in past lifetimes, until it no longer affects me. Um, and, 
so I think I'd be clearing it, and I think that's how Dr. Duhu lended it. He just cleared the data of what he saw was wrong in the world, and the world benefited without him having to interact with the world. So I'd much rather do it that way than actually trying to go to people and be nice to them, who haven't asked me to be nice to them, uh, in that way. So I'd rather do it through mystical means, uh, like Course in Miracles, Hoponopono, or the Antikama prayer, or if I wanted to help people, I might join a 12-step group, or if I was running a spiritual group here, and somebody said to me, like, um, can you help me? I really want your help, and I really want to take on board what you've said to me. Will you help and guide me? I'd be, I'd probably, I might feel inspired to help that person, but I wouldn't go out and see, like, oh, these people in the street, I better go out and sort of, like, show them how they can change their lives. Un unasked for as a sort of a charitable thing. I, I would see that more as a waste of time. Uh, so, um, also, um, yeah, certain levels of consciousness. You know, I remember Hawkins sort of saying about, you know, these these areas. You know, first you have like they're unkept. Uh, there's broken glasses. They all tend to gravitate to these vibrational fields, you see. So, um, so it's not necessarily, you know, you need a certain type of person who wants to go and sort of deal with that type of thing. So yeah, I'd probably say no, and then trust, stay, stay at a high level of consciousness. I'd probably have to clear it, because uh, I might think that the company is trying to impose their values on me. And so I'd have to like, clear, clear my resentment or clear my perceptions of that, let it go stay to a high vibration and either that will be fine or if I have to change then I'll, I'll probably go off to a higher thing because otherwise uh, I think uh, when you start doing spiritual work you really want to like maximize you well it's what it says you know waste no time you know so if it's like I'm going to spend like my weekends doing things which I think have low value it's, it's going to be a waste of time I'd rather do it in a way if I'm going to be helpful to the world and be of, of to do things which will have the maximum effect with the little mm. time, you know, I thought like, um, mm. I, th I think uh, Dr. Hulen, you know, he didn't go in there and try and convert them all, just did the mystical work. So that's the type of stuff I would, uh, I would, uh, I would relate to. Mm.